All right, well, uh, happy 10-year uh, anniversary from uh, Tom Amiano. I represent the great city of San Francisco, and I'm uh, happy to see that you're all here, uh, you know, without the grassroots support on uh, the issue of medical marijuana and legalization of uh, adult use of marijuana. Uh, we would not be in the position we are today. Uh, I'm not saying that we don't uh, have our challenges ahead of us. You know, there's been double messaging, to say the least, uh, from the Obama administration and we have uh, four U.S. attorneys here in California uh, who have turned uh, their back on Prop 215, which some of you uh, may know had its genesis in San Francisco as a response to the uh, AIDS crisis. So uh, I am honored to have sponsored the two bills dealing with um, uh, marijuana here in the state legislature. And uh, uh, while it's been an uphill battle with some of my uh, colleagues, uh, this year we do have uh, three to four more sponsors than we've had previously and uh, we've reached out across the aisle and even have some Republican support. Uh, as all of you know, this is a civil rights issue. Uh, this is an issue uh, particularly about patients' rights. Uh, we were happy to get the, these bills out of committee, um, but we still are struggling with the uh, 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 what's going to happen uh, if and when we get it to the floor. Um, this, the going has been slow. The federal government um, uh, having uh, some duplicity in what it's been saying about particularly medical marijuana dispensaries, the uh, Department of Justice going rogue on us, the U.S. attorneys you know, participating in uh, this uh, spin cycle of uh, reefer madness from the 1930s, uh, all has not been very helpful. But uh, I will say I'm grateful for the response. Um, finally, from some of our federal officials, particularly Nancy Pelosi, uh, and now we really need to look at the federal level, too, in terms of overturning some of the more repressive um, uh, uh, pro uh, prohibitions against the use of marijuana, particularly medical marijuana. Um, we have uh, had conversations with the um, California Medical uh, Association. They're very supportive. Um, they particularly want to see uh, marijuana rescheduled. Uh, taken off Schedule 1, which I hardly endorse. Um, how you can help is, uh, from all the different areas that you represent, is really lobbying and lobbying hard your representatives. Um, in terms of medical marijuana, particularly the polls are very, very good. This is a populist issue. Um, it suffers from a, a, a negative institutional memory. Uh, education is going to be extremely important, but it's, it's definitely worth the struggle. And uh, I, again, hope you have a, a, a great weekend uh, and that uh, some of the ideas that you discuss, uh, you know, I will be very open to in, in terms of further legislation. So uh, thanks again and uh, I hope to see you and hear from you soon. Welcome everyone to the beautiful city of Sacramento. Unfortunately, my schedule doesn't permit me to be with you this weekend, but I'm looking forward to seeing you on Monday as you lobby the Capitol and you promote our coordinated message of safe and affordable access for all medical cannabis patients here in California. We know these are challenging times. The assault by the federal government is shameful, it's indefensible. We've potentially lost a hundred or more dispensaries in just the past year or so. I know in San Francisco it's well over a dozen and many more are at threat of closing. The fear that the U.S. Attorney has instilled in providers is very real. We know that not only are they threatening up to 40 years in prison, a very disproportional punishment for something that isn't even a crime under California law, but even going after landlords and threatening confiscation of their property. But she hasn't stopped there. She's even threatened news media that she would go after them if they dared to put an advertisement on radio or television or in a newspaper. Imagine at a time when newspapers are struggling for their very lives on ever reduced advertising revenue. She wants to make it a crime for a dispensary to advertise in a newspaper and make the criminal the publisher of the newspaper. So this has gone on far too long. I'm pleased to be in partnership in the legislative effort to bring some sanity to this entire situation with my colleague Assemblyman Tom Amiano, who's such a great champion of safe and affordable access. I've had the pleasure of working 
with the coalition in different forms and of course with Americans for Safe Access for many years, going back to my time on the County Board of Supervisors in San Francisco when we created the first medical cannabis identification card program, upon which Senator Vasconcelos based his statewide program in SB 420, of which I was proud to be a co-author. This year we're working on a bill just to clarify very simply that dispensaries, collectives, uh, and others will be exempt from any prosecution under state law by providing this medicine to medical cannabis patients. We need to continue to be vigilant. This federal battle, I'm afraid, may not go away very quickly. But your presence in the Capitol means a lot. And I just want to encourage you that your voice is not only important, but it's critically important on Monday that you'll be in, I understand, nearly every legislative office, and it's confounding for me as it is for you when we look at polling, that not only in California but across the country, poll after poll shows 70, 75 percent, if not more, of Americans support the compassionate use of marijuana, and in California the number may even be higher. And of course, our law has been in place since 1996, and yet my legislative colleagues I have seen time and time again so fearful to cast a vote for the most logical piece of legislation. We've struggled for years to put in statute a legal right to employment for medical cannabis patients. Of course there was a very unsounded, unfounded, uh, confusing, bizarre California Supreme Court decision a few years ago Ross versus, versus waging, Raging Wire, which ruled that an employer has the right to fire a medical cannabis patient, not for cause, not for being unable to perform a job, but merely by definition of being a medical cannabis patient when Gary Ross was tested positive for using his medicine. We've tried to change that to make sure that every patient has the right to employment. I'm, argument I make to my colleagues is don't we want people to feel better and get on their feet as a result of the benefit of their medicine so they can go back to work so they won't be dependent upon the state and our general fund for their health and well-being and it seems to me that to take the reasoning of the California Supreme Court to its logical conclusion in their decision in Ross v. Raging Wire that when the voters supported the Compassionate Use Act of 1996 that they intended it only for unemployed people. That makes no sense whatsoever. So again, I just want to encourage you, I want to thank you. We certainly can't do this alone. You are what allows us to continue to do the work that we do here legislatively. And together, we know we will create sensible and sane laws to allow for patients to be able to access affordably, safely, and legally their physician-recommended medicine. And, and by the way, Americans for Safe Access, happy 10th anniversary. You wear it well. Hi, I'm Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, and I want to welcome you to Sacramento and welcome you to political activism. That's what's going to make the difference. You know, our founding fathers uh, put in place, you, you remember our founding fathers, they're the ones who made rope out of hemp. Uh, well, they also had in mind that we have a free country and a democratic government, and what that means is the people who are active in the political system are the ones who are going to make the laws and set the policy. Now, we haven't been as active as we should have been in the past, but today there are many people who understand that this making medical marijuana illegal is insane, and it is even more insane to have the federal government spend its limited resources at a time when we have to borrow one-third of our budget from, from overseas, a lot of it from China, in order to, in order to what? To pay for the, what the government's doing, and then the government is using that money to attack people in California for, distributing, for distribution of medical marijuana, and of course, the people of California have voted that uh, they don't want medical marijuana to be illegal. Uh, and I believe our founding fathers also believed that local and state people were the ones who will determine what is, what is a, against the law and what is 
uh, in favor of the law in terms of criminal activity. And uh, the people of this state have decided that dispensing marijuana should not be looked at as a criminal activity. And uh, we need to make sure that our fellow citizens are activated and make sure that they are contacting their member of the legislature and their member of Congress to make sure the next time this goes up for a vote that we just uh, that we don't have 165 votes but instead perhaps we can actually win the vote the next time around but that's up to us it's up to you and uh, that's why you're there in Sacramento it's to uh, uh, sort of understand how the how to lobby your members of Congress and I want to wish you a very productive uh, session there and uh, also, I just want you to know that uh, as a Republican, I know you're going to have a lot of problem with Republicans. Well, you just tell them Dana Rohrabacher, who is Ronald Reagan's special assistant and speechwriter, is the one leading the charge uh, to make sure that we aren't wasting law enforcement dollars that should go to protecting people against murders and rapists and, 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 and all sorts of terrible uh, people and robbers. Uh, instead, we're going to have that money being spent on trying uh, to prevent someone who's sick from getting uh, something that a, and a doctor may believe might help them and, and eliminate some of their suffering. Total nonsense, as you know, or you wouldn't be there. So let's uh, be active. Let's do what, uh, uh, what we're supposed to do in a free society, and that's make sure that those making the laws reflect the opinions of those who are the governed. Uh, remember that. It's the consent of the governed that counts in this country. So let's go and make sure that uh, the elected members of Congress know that we are not consenting to have our limited tax dollars being used by the federal government to interfere with the decisions of local people as to whether medical marijuana should be legal or legal within that state. I want to uh, send a special greeting to ASA and congratulating them on the 10th anniversary of their organization. So thank you very much and good luck and God bless. Hello to everyone with Americans for Safe Access. Welcome to California, my home state. You have many supporters in this state and I'm one of them. I know we all thought by now, especially with Barack Obama in the White House, there would be greater progress on medical marijuana. Instead, we've seen raids on clinics, bank assets frozen, inventories confiscated. To me, that is not the sign of an informed healthcare policy. Ironically, I know that the president is really dedicated to alternative and expanded healthcare access. Now we just have to see to it that his policy principles meet up with his administration's actions. It's true that medical marijuana is not for everyone, but traditional medicine isn't for everyone either. There are 17 states that believe people who are in pain or who suffer chronic conditions ought to have options if traditional treatments don't provide relief. 17 states. That's over 100 million people. And that's where I think of you. In ASA, find your strength. In the people, the grassroots, the first and foremost principle enshrined in our Constitution is the people's right to petition their government. That's your role. There are 100 million people who live in those 17 states. They have access to 141 congressmen and 32 United States senators. Of those 141 congressmen, 61 of them voted against the marijuana amendment that was in the House of Representatives just two weeks ago, an amendment that failed by 163 to 262 vote. Just think, if we'd had those extra 61 members, Voting with us, we would have been victorious and would have moved national policy much closer to a real access and real use of medical marijuana for purposes stated. ASA does a great job of laying out the argument for medical marijuana. Now we need 100 million people in those 17 states to make sure that not just some, but all of their congressmen vote yes on this issue. I can attest that congressmen, when confronted with sizable, loud, and persistent constituent groups, they will respond. So let's get them to respond. Get your people organized. Get them motivated. Get them out in the street to petition their government. It's their right, and they should empower themselves to make it happen. With you 
and ASA working from the outside and me and my pro-marijuana colleagues working from the inside, we can get this done. Thank you very much.